Zendaya has been on everybody's lips for the past four years, and it's largely because of her role in Euphoria. Prior to that time, she had been acting on Disney and other kids' networks, but very little is known about her. Sometime in 2022, people on social media were wondering what her surname was and what meaning her name carried. The actress has kept her life outside social media, except the professional aspect, of course all of which has consistently made people more curious about her. So if you've been trying to know more about Zendaya, take a seat as we will tell you everything we know. Zendaya Marie Stormer Coleman was born on September 1st, 1996 in Oakland, California. Both her parents were teachers and she attended the elementary school where her mother taught. When you grow up with educators as parents, it's almost normal for you to feel so much pressure and want to live up to harsh expectations from your parents. But it appears Zendaya had supportive parents. She has five older siblings, but they are not in the entertainment industry like her. Zendaya got her first introduction to entertainment when she and two of her friends did a stage play in school for Black History Month when she was six years old. After the play, she decided to explore other talents and joined a hip hop dance group when she was eight years old. She remained in that dance group for the next three years, and during that period, she spent two years dancing hula with the Academy of Hawaiian Arts. When she got older, her mother became a house manager at the California Shakespeare Theater, where she grew up as a part-time performer. Most of the entertainers you see today all gained an interest in their craft from spending time around people that did the same thing. An example is Doja Cat, who gained an interest in dancing from when she grew up in an Indian temple and learned Hindu dances. If you watch her performances, you see how those dance styles shine through. It was the same story with Zendaya, who developed an interest in acting from seeing all those theatrical productions. While Zendaya's mom did the summer job as a house manager for the theater, Zendaya helped seat patrons and sold fundraising tickets. So she didn't really grow up in a luxurious home, but her parents worked hard to ensure she didn't lack basic necessities. Zendaya went on to attend the Oakland School of Arts, which created an avenue for her to be cast in multiple local stage plays. Most of the roles she acted as a theater kid involved Shakespeare, and considering the intensity of the author's stories, it's no surprise that the adult Zendaya is very expressive. When she was in seventh grade, her family moved to Los Angeles, where Zendaya got more opportunities to take her career to the next level. It's important to note that most of Zendaya's interest in Shakespeare as a child can be traced down to her mother, Claire Stormer. Claire was an educator through and through, teaching the students under her in a way that could potentially change their lives. Zendaya said she always wished her mother could teach in inner city schools because they were underfunded. According to the actress, her mother teaches her students about art in an intense manner and helps them understand Shakespearean literature. So when Zendaya started to show an interest in acting, it was not so hard for Claire to decide that she was going to stand by her daughter a decision that she will never regret. Anyway, after moving to Los Angeles, Zendaya started her career as a model in 2009. She worked as a fashion model for Macy's, Old Navy, and Mervyn's, and anyone who saw how she expressed herself in fashion ads knew that she was going to be a great model when she got older. After her beginner career as a model, she was cast in an ad for an iCarly toy, and months later, she appeared as a backup dancer on a Sears commercial that featured Selena Gomez. Zendaya finally got her big break when Disney decided to create a female buddy comedy, but with a dance aspect. The young actress at the time was already talented at dancing and acting, so it was evident that the show was a perfect fit for her. She auditioned for the role to play Cece Jones, but Bella Thorne got the role instead, and Zendaya was cast as Rocky Blue, the second female lead. The show followed the lives of both actresses as they worked as backup dancers in a local dance crew. When the show premiered in 2010, the first episode was watched by 6.2 million viewers, becoming Disney Channel's second highest most watched show premiere. Lovers of Disney Channel were impressed by the performance of the actresses, especially Zendaya, who bodied her role with so much ease, almost as if the script was written with her in mind. Due to the success of the first season of Shake It Up, Disney renewed it for a second season. While production was underway, Zendaya released her first single called Swag It Out. She then went on to star in the book trailer for From Bad to Cursed. By September 2011, the second season of Shake It Up premiered on Disney Channel, 
and it was as successful as the first one. Target even added a new fashion line called The Sign to their store, and it featured outfits inspired by Zendaya and other cast members of the show. It was obvious. Zendaya was influential, and that was just the beginning of her career. Zendaya finally broke into film with her role in Frenemies, a Disney Channel original movie. She worked more on her music career because of the movie, as she was contracted to create original soundtracks for the movie. When Zendaya turned 16, she participated in Dancing with the Stars, making her one of the youngest celebrities to ever compete in the show. She was paired with Valentin Jeromowski, and they ended the competition as runners-up. In September 2013, she released her first studio album named after herself, which made Elvis Duran name her as Artist of the Month. She also got the opportunity to perform the first single off the album, Replay, at NBC's Today. In November of the same year, she was cast as the lead in Disney Channel's pilot, Super Awesome Katie, which was later renamed KC Undercover. Zendaya always seems to be very in tune with any character she plays. So when the show was renamed, she exerted influence over key aspects of the character, like her personality, which greatly affected the success of the show in a positive way. If you watch KC Undercover growing up, then you must understand that a lot of effort went into the creation of the show. Zendaya acted different roles in the show as she had to hide her identity in every scene as a teen spy. Considering how successful the show was and seeing that she determined many things about the character, then it's evident that she's talented. The show premiered in January 2015, and because of the positive reviews, it was renewed for a second season in May 2015. But it was only a matter of time before people started projecting their insecurities onto Zendaya. In the industry, we know how much hate and microaggressions black people face. But when you are a mix of black and any other race, people tend to not know how to insult you. So they make full-on racist remarks and disguise it as a joke. Zendaya is African-American and Nigerian on her father's side and German and Scottish on her mother's side. She's not black enough for haters in the black community, and she's also not white enough for the racists in the white community. So when she was invited to the Oscars in 2015 and decided to lean into her black heritage by rocking locks with her outfit, Juliana Rankic had a lot to say. At the event, Zendaya wore a white dress and had her hair in locks, which is common amongst members of the black community. Rancic didn't seem to like the look and said the hairstyle made Zendaya look like she smells of patchouli and smokes weed. Unless you live under a rock or you like to ignore the truth, then you should know how black people have been treated badly because of their choice of protective hairstyles. From black people being judged for leaving out their afros or being called dirty for keeping their hair in locks, there is always some vitriol to throw around. For those who don't know, black hair comes in so many textures and can be styled as the owners deem fit. Now, there is a common stereotype that black people who wear their hair in dreadlocks are dirty and do drugs and are unfit to be in society, which prevented many people from getting jobs or living in areas they really liked. In fact, an act had to be passed in the U.S. in 2018 to prevent the oppression of black people because of their hair. How messed up does the world have to be for a law to be passed before a whole race of people get respect? The least we can do is educate ourselves. Anyway, after Rancic made that comment on Zendaya, the actress defended herself on Instagram by calling the racist comment outrageously offensive. She said there was a line between what was funny and disrespectful, and Rancic's comic was nothing short of disrespectful, to be honest. Since Rancic was not smart enough to educate herself on dreadlocks, Zendaya was hit with a plethora of slurs and hate comments. At the time of this incident, Zendaya was 18 years old, and for her to have to deal with that kind of hate over something that should be as simple as hair, it shows how ignorant many people within the industry are. Zendaya made it clear that she's not one to respond to negative remarks, but certain comments cannot be left unchecked. Afterwards, Juliana released an apology on Twitter and claimed that she meant the remark in a bohemian chic way and nothing racist. The problem with the apology was that Rancic was still trying to defend her outrageous statement, and people who know history know that the supposed bohemian chic fashion is just cultural appropriation. Bohemian fashion romanticizes the gypsy lifestyle and acts like it's a bunch of people dressing up in frills, tiered skirts, and boots. Meanwhile, the real bohemian people were marginalized and persecuted. Imagine defending a hate comment with further hate comments. Anyway, she didn't get a public response from Zendaya, and years after that incident, 
people still point back to it. Zendaya has since moved past the situation and continues to embrace her unique style as a person of color. Although being biracial has made people treat her like some sort of outcast. During one of her most recent interviews, she revealed that she's aware of how hard it is to fit into certain spaces because of her color. But since she's more light-skinned than dark, she is aware of her privilege and uses it to help people in the black community. She lends her voice to causes that can help members of the black community move forward in life. And that's one thing many other biracial actors most times ignore. When you are biracial and white passing, you tend to get more opportunities in the industry. But when certain biracial entertainers get their opportunity, they begin to distance themselves from the black community and embrace their other heritage. But for Zendaya, she ensured she stayed in tune with her culture while not forgetting her privilege. Although her career never struggled at any point, Zendaya soon started getting bigger roles and a bigger pay when she was featured in Spider-Man No Way Home. When she auditioned for the movie, she went in with a bare face, something that's rare to see. Many actors and actresses sit with a full face of makeup every time, but Zendaya was going against the norm. Growing up, Zendaya revealed that she never saw her mother wear makeup. It helped her build her confidence, as she didn't attach it to how much foundation was on her face or how bright her eyeshadow was. Although she doesn't use makeup all the time, Zendaya said she and her mom also love to glam it up. So there's a healthy balance between the two. After Zendaya got the role as MJ without makeup, the directors and costumers decided to incorporate that into the movie. Throughout the entire shoot, Zendaya didn't wear makeup, and she ensured she also determined the personality of her character. For example, she carried a mug of herbal tea throughout the majority of the movie, which was her decision. It's amazing how the actress ensures her characters are not boring by giving them life with her impeccable ideas. People have never had doubt about her acting talent, but when she starred in HBO's Euphoria in 2019, everyone came to a halt just to praise her. Zendaya was cast as the main character and narrator of the series, Rue. She was a drug addict in the movie who was still in high school. The movie showed the fictional life of American high school students and their struggle to keep being called the cool kids while they navigate love. If you had never seen Zendaya before then, you would assume she had drug issues in reality and it was just a rip and was just in a reality show. From how she experienced the pain of withdrawals to how she acted mad when she couldn't get drugs, Zendaya was an emotional wreck from start to finish. Although we can't say the success of Euphoria was all Zendaya's doing because her co-stars worked extra hard on their roles too. After the final episode of season two of the show was aired, everybody was on their seat for season three, which was postponed because of the writers and actors strike. But before season two of the show was released, some critics had a lot of negative things to say. Their major concern was that Euphoria was glamorizing drug use, according to them. An anti-drug organization released a statement against the series, saying, rather than further each parent's desire to keep their children safe from the potentially horrific consequences of drug abuse and other high-risk behavior, HBO's television drama Euphoria chooses to misguidedly glorify and erroneously depict high school student drug use, addiction, anonymous sex, violence, and other destructive behaviors as common and widespread in today's world. Many of the stars of the show were unhappy with the criticism, and Zendaya, being the executive producer and lead actress of the show, defended the show. According to her, the show was not made to tell people how to live their life. It was supposed to show people that no matter what you're struggling with, you're never alone. And if you study the characters of the show, you would easily understand her point. Rue had emotional disorders and was using drugs to cope with her father's death. Gia was struggling as the glass child because her mother paid more attention to Rue. Cassie was struggling because her body had grown faster than her peers, which made people sexualize her, leading to her sexualizing herself. Maddie was the cool kid who endured a toxic relationship because she looked cool with her boyfriend. Nate was a toxic boy because that's all he had ever been exposed to by his father. And Kat dealt with body dysmorphia because of her weight. And when she started liking her body, it was only because she got paid by weirdos who had a kink. Every character is somebody we know in our lives, whether we want to admit it or not. So if you watched Euphoria and all you could see was the glamorization of drugs, then you likely started it with a biased mind. The essence of Euphoria is to make people know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, and they don't need to feel alone in any situation. Zendaya has always been known to be a private person, 
The major reason this video exists is because many people don't know a lot about the actress. But one thing she was not able to keep private was her relationship with Tom Holland, her Spider-Man co-star. They first met on the set of Spider-Man in 2016, and since then, they formed a friendship. They were always appearing at interviews and red carpet events together, and for a hot minute, people assumed it was just publicity for the Marvel movie. However, they started posting each other's pictures on birthdays with weird but cute captions. Soon enough, fans started to link them romantically, and they denied all the allegations. They even went as far as claiming they were single on different shows and interviews, until finally in 2021, they were photographed kissing while in the area that Zendaya's mom lives. About a year later, Tom and Zendaya talked about their relationship going public, saying they felt like it was robbed from them. Even if they decided to hide their relationship until they broke up, it's really nobody's business. But when you're a celebrity, you can't control what people see. You can only control how you react to what they see. Till this day, Zendaya and Tom are tight-lipped about their relationship, but they don't hide their love for each other. Zendaya is a majorly Zendaya is majorly a non-problematic person, so there's a lot to learn from her. You never get the news that she was involved in some messy drama, and that's one of the most beautiful things about the entertainer.